Hey guys, James here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about sharing my lifelong love of cars with you guys. Today we're sitting here in my 2002 E53 BMW X5 with the 3.0 inline six up under the hood. And today let's talk about why inline six engines are so awesome compared to their V6 counterparts and also some of the disadvantages of inline six engines. And then at the end of this video, let's talk about why I think inline sixes are making a little bit of a comeback. All right, let's start with my personal favorite uh, aspect of inline six engines, and that is the sound. Inline six engines are actually known to have a much more sonorous, a, a much more kind of bass heavy exhaust note than an equivalent V6. And there's a very good technical reason for that. In an inline six, you have all six cylinders arranged just in a row. And what that means is that they actually all share the same exhaust header. And as a result of that, uh, the resonance of that exhaust header is going to be a lot deeper than you would find in say, the two shorter exhaust headers in a V6. So you get this, this bassier kind of exhaust note than you would in a V6. The second advantage of an inline six is that inline sixes can have a greater stroke length than an equivalent V6. And why is that? Well, it's because in a V6, you have both banks of cylinders kind of coming together at the bottom. And what that does is that kind of restricts the, the distance that the pistons can move thereby decreasing the possible stroke, uh, all things being equal. So because in an inline six, the pistons have all this room to move up and down, then inline sixes typically have greater stroke. And so what does that mean in terms of performance? In general, an engine with more stroke will have more torque than an equivalent engine with more bore. Why is that? Well, an engine that has greater stroke means that you're actually, you have more energy that's being put out by the engine with each engine revolution, hence more torque at the low end. And what that also means is that a, an engine with greater stroke is going to struggle to rev up really high because the piston has to move just so much with each engine revolution, therefore you generally have a lower red line, less performance at high RPMs, but you get that greater torque. This is why, in general, BMWs have historically felt kind of meatier, beefier in their engine performance than their horsepower numbers would indicate. It's, it's because of these inline six engines that produce a lot of torque uh, and, and are relatively a little bit weaker in horsepower. Now, of course, some of the real high performance, you know, M engines are great in the horsepower department as well. But when you're, when we're talking about the regular kind of uh, everyday mainstream BMWs with inline sixes, they tended to be more torquey than uh, horsepower oriented. So if you tend to like engines that feel real effortless at the low end and can kind of get you around town and, and give you that immediate response, then an inline six has that advantage over an equivalent V6. Next, let's talk about the inherent balance and therefore smoothness of an inline six. The inline six configuration is the simplest engine configuration where all of the primary and secondary forces, which I'll explain in just a second, are balanced out without the need for counterweights of any kind. Primary forces are the forces that are generated when the pistons move up and down within the cylinders. And secondary forces are the smaller forces that are generated as a result of the fact that the pistons actually move faster at the top in the top half of their travel than in the bottom half. In an inline six, because of the fact that cylinders one and six, two and five, and three and four are paired up and they move in a certain pattern, all of these forces are actually naturally balanced out. And that is not true of a V6. Well, what about those famously smooth Lexus V6s or Toyota V6s? Aren't they like just incredibly smooth? Yes, they are. And I can confirm that uh, in my 2010 IS350 back in the day. But here's the thing, in order to make a V6 feel really smooth and, and balanced, uh, Toyota and Lexus had to add a whole bunch of counterweights and balance shafts to balance out all of these different forces, these opposing forces. And what that does is that increases the rotational inertia of the engine, which in turn makes it less responsive. So you have a smooth engine, but then you lose the responsiveness of that engine. All right, and the final reason that inline sixes are so awesome compared to V6s comes down to the simplicity of inline six engines. You have just 
one valve train and the set and one set of you know gaskets uh, that correspond to that valve train. And when it comes to BMW engines in particular, which are just notorious for oil leaks of all kinds, uh, having just one set of valve train gaskets is actually a huge advantage in terms of maintenance and reliability. And that was definitely one of the considerations that I had when I bought this car. Uh, I was kind of deciding whether I should get the inline six or the V8 version. And I know that this video is primarily con comparing inline sixes to V6s, but the same concept applies. The V8s in the E53s, the, especially the early ones, uh, were just prone to a lot of leakage, a lot of oil leakage everywhere. And um, that the fact that there were two valve trains was a big factor there. And now let's talk about the disadvantages of inline six engines. Well, the, the most obvious and perhaps the most serious disadvantage of inline six engines is packaging. When you line up six cylinders in a row, that takes up a lot of space. In a V6, the two banks of cylinders are kind of in, like kind of nestled together. And as a result, a V6 engine is much, much shorter than an inline six. As the world began moving towards front wheel drive vehicles, the need for transverse engines as opposed to longitudinal engines increased. And that is the reason that inline sixes kind of fell out of favor in the last few decades in favor of V6s. One thing that I find really interesting is that V6s are actually approximately the same length as inline fours. Uh, and in fact, an, a, an equivalent V6 is actually a bit shorter often than an inline four. And so what that means is that it's, re first of all, really well suited to transverse applications. And secondly, a car manufacturer can offer an inline four and a V6 version of the same car without changing too much under the hood because the, the sizes of the engines are not that different. A perfect example of this is the Toyota Camry, which you know currently is still offered with an inline four option and a V6 option. Of course, because inline sixes have to be longitudinal and because they take up so much room, what that does mean is that when a car manufacturer puts an inline six into a car longitudinally, what you typically get is that nice sports car proportion with a long hood and a short rear deck. So, you know, it's not all bad news, but for most people in practical front wheel drive cars, V6s were just way better than inline sixes. The second disadvantage of inline sixes is that they tend to have a just a slightly higher center of gravity than an equivalent V6. And the reason for that is that V6s have their banks of cylinders kind of diagonally arranged, kind of nestled in with each other, versus an inline six where everything is vertical. And finally, inline sixes have very long camshafts and very long crankshafts. And these can bend at higher RPMs, which is another reason that, that inline sixes tend to be limited when it comes to how high they can rev. Of course, the manufacturer can make the camshafts and the crankshafts a little bit stronger, but that either means that they're heavier or more expensive. So those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of inline six engines versus their V6 counterparts. And now let's talk about why I think in recent years there's been this sort of renewed interest in the inline six configuration. As I described earlier, the V6 kind of took over the six cylinder configurations because of its practicality when it comes to packaging and the ability to use it in front wheel drive cars. In recent times though, the V6 is becoming increasingly replaced by turbo fours. And we can see that in cars like the Honda Accord and the Hyundai Sonata, both of which used to come with V6 and naturally aspirated inline fours and now come with naturally aspirated inline fours and turbo fours. So in the world of practical cars, inline fours are kind of taking over the V6 niche because they have better efficiency and better low end torque, uh, which means that they can you know, more effortlessly deliver power. And not to mention the fact that the engine can share a lot of its design with the naturally aspirated version of that engine. And what that means is that six cylinder engines are becoming increasingly kind of specific to luxury and sports cars. When we're talking about luxury, 
luxury and sports cars, we're more likely to be dealing with a rear wheel drive platform. And what that means is that the packaging kind of uh, inefficiency of an inline six is less of an issue because we're dealing with that longitudinal uh, rear wheel drive format. And you can imagine if a manufacturer is deciding whether to put money into you know a V6 or an inline six when they're trying to decide on you know how to proceed with a six cylinder engine, you well, if a greater percentage of that engine's use will be in a luxury or sports car, then they're more likely to give the green light to an inline six. And that's why I think we're seeing more interest lately in inline six engines like the Mercedes M256 or the rumored Mazda inline six engine that's coming out. Um, and even Toyota, I mean, they didn't want to develop their own inline six, but they knew they had to put an inline six in the Supra. So they went to BMW and you know, that's uh, more B58s being produced for the world. There you have it. Those are my thoughts on the advantages and disadvantages of inline six engines versus their V6 counterparts, as well as why I think there's this sort of resurgence in uh, people's interest in inline six engines. If you liked this video or found it thought provoking, hit that like button down below. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button as well for more content that I have coming out for you guys. Thanks again for joining me until the end of today's video. Again, my name is James and I will see you in the next one.